Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 117, we're covering all of the indie games hitting the Nintendo Switch leading up to the big E3 blowout. After the new releases, we'll check out some of the best eShop deals this week and help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. If you like our weekly indie rundowns, toss us a like and subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Twitter, come hang out with us on Discord, and stop by the YouTube channel on Thursday for the Nindies at Night stream. We've got a short but sweet show this week, citizens, but you know how we do. Before we get to the new releases, we need to check out the games that snuck onto the eShop over the past week. So let's kick off episode 117 of Nindy Nation by taking a look at the five neglected Nindies that released since episode 116. Alchemist Adventure is an action RPG developed by the Nindy newcomers from Brazil, Bad Minions. As the name suggests, this isometric adventure relies heavily on magic and alchemy for not only real-time combat, but also for puzzles and as the basis for a story about a young alchemist who must save her family while unraveling her forgotten memories. Early reviews are pretty good, and it seems to cover a lot of ground in a 10-15 to 15 hour journey. I thought it looked cool, and for $19.99, maybe you will too. Click Team is no stranger to the eShop, and this week they throw their hat in the ring with yet another 16-bit exploration platformer. In Existence Rebirth is a $9 Metroidvania that features RPG progression, multiple types of combat, and side quests if you're in the mood to explore. The environments show some decent variety, and the overall game seems competent, but I don't see a ton here to really help set it apart. Either way, if you're like me, sometimes it's nice to fire up a traditional game like this and blow through it over the weekend. And that alone might make it worth adding to your wish list. Our next game is a whole lot of things rolled into one, and I think a lot of you are going to eat it up. Wave Break is the latest release, and first on the Switch, by the team at Funktronic Labs, and while it launches for $29.99, I think it justifies the price. First off, imagine the gameplay of the classic Tony Hawk series, exploring a map, doing tricks, finding secrets, that kind of stuff. Now, do that on a jet ski or miniature boat, and within a cartoony world that riffs hard on the 80s Miami Vice aesthetic, complete with a synthwave soundtrack to set the tone. In addition, this game that seems like Wave Race 64 meets Tony Hawk also includes arena combat levels more akin to Twisted Metal or Cell Damage, and it includes a park editor to make your own levels. Throw in a single-player campaign, a bunch of online modes, and top it all off with a smooth 60 frames per second performance? Wave Break is looking like a pretty fun addition in a genre that we don't see a ton of on the Switch. I'll see if I can grab a copy of it for myself, and maybe we can check it out together this week on Nindies at Night. Next up, citizens, is a game that should make you fire up the eShop and pick up the demo right now, as we've got the latest from Mike Bithel. As far as I'm concerned, Bithel has yet to make a subpar game. With titles like Thomas Was Alone, Subsurface Circular, and John Wick Hex all under his belt, this week he flexes his muscles yet again to a game that kinda mixes all of those genres into one shorter experience. The Solitaire Conspiracy tells a spy story revolving around 10 groups competing in a slick, evolving card game based on the principles of the game's title. The solo campaign features full motion video and RPG progression, but extends to four other gameplay modes to really help you get the most out of the system the game was designed around. If this sounds even remotely interesting to you, go pick up the demo and give it a whirl. It launches with a discount for $9.59, but even at full price, if the demo proves to be up your alley, I bet you can easily get 12 bucks of value out of Bithel's latest endeavor. And then, continuing to improve on the quality of releases as we've seen over the past couple of months, Rattleika is back at it again this week with Indie Nova's latest title, Sun Wukong vs. Robot for $4.99. I've played a good deal of this game over the past week while on vacation, and if what you're seeing on screen is an 8-bit sci-fi Metroid-like game but with a bit more melee combat, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. 
I'm reminded of Zeo Drifter in the way that you can kinda explore the world how you please, but Sun Wukong is definitely more open-ended, even if that is a bit to its detriment. The game is a bit rough around the edges, but it provides a good challenge with a fun variety of weapons and upgrades to experiment with, and just as we've come to expect from Rattleleka, it's a pretty decent way to spend a weekend after forking over five bucks. And just like the goose poop that litters your neighborhood sidewalk, before we jump into the new releases, here's a few games to avoid at all costs. PixArts claims League of Champions Soccer is a new game, but I'm positive we've covered this dumpster fire earlier this year, and it looks just as bad now as it did then. Boombit Games made one racing game a couple years back and continue to re-release it under different names. This week throwing all sense of grammar to the wind and calling it Multi-Level Parking Driver. Now, that name may be a bit of an oxymoron, but one thing's for sure. The offices of Boombit Games are absolutely full of actual morons. And then the absolute psychopaths at D3 Publisher have the gall to charge $45 for an anime dating game by developer Vridge, which features an absolute banger of a theme song. Of fleeting yet beautiful love blossoms in an age of upheaval, this is a romance game for women. Which means, of course, you romance men, because anything else would be just crazy to presume, right? Where you become the first female soldier, fight alongside other soldiers, and fall in love. This classic Atome game is Bakumatsu Renka Shin Sengumi! And finally, a game that launches with an 80% discount for only a buck 99, my friends, I think is a must buy, especially with that killer discount. From the team who releases games so bad, it only makes sense to assume they're a front for a drug cartel. Please don't kill me. We've got the latest from Game National Notes. That's right, Notes. You can have right now a wonderful two to note down anything you need on your everyday life. This is a simple and useful, it works perfectly, notation book for you, gamer or not gamer, to take notes in an easy and quick way. It comes with an automatic saving tool too. If you're thinking that this is a blank screen that lets you enter text, you're exactly right. Thanks, Nintendo. Make sure to check out that Solitaire Conspiracy demo, because it looks like a good one. I'm curious about Alchemist Adventure, and frankly, both Wave Break and In Existence could be solid picks at the right price. Throwing any of these on your wish list? Let me know. Now, we're in the midst of E3, which means we're going to get some shadow drops, and if history is any indicator, we're probably getting an Indie World presentation pretty soon, too. For that reason, the new release list is pretty slim this week, but don't let that fool you, because there's still some good stuff on deck. These are the seven new releases hitting the eShop through June 18th. The first game of the week drops on Wednesday, June 16th by way of Dead Alion Games and Ultimate Games. Plastic Rebellion is yet another game in the genre, I guess, of Hey, your toy soldiers came to life! But I really dig the different approach here. You're primarily playing through waves of tower defense stemming from an out-of-control 3D printer, but the general layout feels very real-time strategy, and there's aspects which put you in a first-person view of turrets and vehicles to get more directly involved in the action. No idea why this game doesn't have a price listed, but I'll guess this one drops for 10 bucks. And if so, I would recommend adding it to your wish list and maybe checking it out when it's 5 or 7 bucks or so. <laughs> Watch it launch for 25 bucks or something. On the 17th, kicking off the smallest Thursday drop we've had this year, Chaos Mind releases a brutal obstacle platformer called Lucid Form for $4.49. Its main shtick is that you can change the color of your little blob dude and have to do so quickly in order to bounce off of platforms, pass through spikes, and that sort of thing. For less than five bucks, hey, you do you, Lucid Form. 
Seven Years From Now is apparently a story-based adventure worth taking note of if this is what you're typically into. It's developed by Haraya Space and released last year to seemingly rave reviews on mobile devices. It's a slice-of-life drama with a chonky voxel art style about a high school boy who is recovering his memories after an accident seven years ago, but of course everything isn't as it seems. I think the first chapter or so is free on mobile, so maybe that's a good way to check it out before you drop $9.99 on the full version publishing this week by P-Cube. Dear team at Daku, if you happen to see this, know that I almost dismissed your game, but I'm glad I gave it a second look. Rotund Takeoff is an $8 platformer that is actually a remake of a title released back on the Wii U, and while it may look like just another try-die-retry platformer, the mechanics take it to much deeper territory. It's got a charming art style with cute little woodland creatures, a great sense of humor, and solid music all around with a primary mechanic of non-stop bouncing so your primary interaction is just steering the character through levels that get surprisingly creative and complex. If you were there for the original release of Chubbins on the Wii U, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. And if you happen to check out Rotund Takeoff for yourself, I want to hear what you think. And then we get to another retro-inspired throwback with Ranger Dog by Ooey Games! Published by Hanaji Games, this side-scrolling shoot-'em-up is simple and vibrant with clear inspiration to the colorful shmups of the Genesis and TurboGrafx-16. I love that era of the genre, and for only 6 bucks, I intend to pick this one up to see if it delivers on that retro promise. Now, if that sounds good, but you're really just in the mood to walk around in a big-ass mech suit and blow shit up, then NeoWiz has just the thing for you. Why is everybody using all capitals this week? Metal Unit is a side-scrolling action game that looks pretty cool. It's just unfortunate that there's almost zero information about the game, because that makes it tough to justify 16 bucks on a game that we know almost nothing about. If I can get a copy, though, maybe we can check it out on Nindies at Night, because I do like what I'm seeing from the short trailer. We've got just a bit more for you in this super short week, but first, make sure to stay far, far away from Canon Army, because it's made by PixArts, which likely means your digital dollars would go towards an evil cause, like, uh cooking kittens, or tearing the stuffing out of children's teddy bears, or something. And Query 8 is back at it again with Idle Days for $7.99. It's about a music producer searching for the next pop sensation. He finds a girl in a park, tells her that she should be a pop star, and she says no. Then they end up working at the same company where your job becomes pressuring her into something that she doesn't want to do while also pursuing a romantic relationship with her. <laughs> It's like a 90s rom-com, but you play as Lou Pearlman. <laughs> and then, the final game for the week is going to get the time that it deserves, my friends. Bear's Restaurant is a cute and cuddly game by Odin Cat that releases on sale for eleven sixty nine. Or is it? Strap in. Adventure Game of Tears and Hopes Bear Restaurant. In this restaurant, the dead will have the last supper. Hamburgers, omelets, sushi, pudding, anything. Let us cook your favorite dish from when you were alive. You are Cat, the assistant of Bear, who is running this restaurant. Players can know about their favorite things by diving into the memories of the customers. But in fact, you do not remember who you are. Not even your favorite dishes. There is no difficult puzzle, no exciting battle, no epic cutscenes, but you will remember them. Anyone else have this uh, weird sense of dread? Will someone please play Bear's Restaurant and tell me if it's the children's game turned creepy pasta that it sounds like? It's a weird one. So yeah, it's a very short list this week as everyone gears up for Nintendo's E3 showcase, which happens the day this video publishes. But I think there's some decent stuff out there like Metal Unit, Rotund Takeoff, hell, pretty much all of them look at least interesting. 
Anything standing out for you? By time you see this, there should be a big E3 sale on the eShop, but there's still a few games already on sale that are worth checking out. So before you get back to your week of video game announcements, here's our picks for seven of the best indie deals through at least June 18th. If you love Diablo-style games where you can just aimlessly roam, hack, slash, and loot to your heart's content, one of the best in the genre is Torchlight 2, and right now it's 40% off for just $11.99. There's about 20 hours of campaign here, but you can replay it across all of the available classes, and there's easily 70 plus hours of post-game content. There's a lot here. Torchlight 3 was a big misstep for the series, but the second, especially at this price, is a great game to chip away at for months on end, and it includes procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! A game that I loved so much it sparked, no pun intended, a new series of Nindies We Love videos is Sparklight, a narrative-driven trifecta that takes the classic Zelda format and surrounds it with fantastic production. It's not too long, running around 8 to 10 hours, and there's not much left to do after the game is complete, but I am very happy to have this game's notch in my belt, and I think you will too if you pick it up while it's 60% off for $9.99. And if you ever do decide to replay it, there will be plenty more to see, as it also comes complete with procedurally generated levels, Rogue-like mechanics, and RPG elements! <laughs> One of the citizens who frequents the Nindy Nation Discord channel likes to share his stories of Sunday morning game time. If you also love sitting down with your drink of choice and playing a game from start to finish, might I suggest The Gardens Between while it's 77% off for $4.59. It's a story-driven puzzle game about time manipulation in a diorama world that is littered with items which remind the protagonists about their lifelong friendship. And it's a great experience that will only take you about two to three hours to see through. Another recommendation from a recent episode is one that I want to make sure more of you pick up before the sequel that comes out later this year. Ollie Ollie Switch Stance is a collection of two excellent 2D skateboarding games where your goal is to string together a series of perfectly executed tricks to line up the highest score possible. And it's extremely addictive. At 80% off for only $2.99, this collection of two games enhanced for the Switch is one of those that is just about a fit for anyone. Dungeonoid is a fun little game that released right around Christmas last year, and the premise is extremely simple. It's a low-budget Brick Breaker clone that's crafted like a dungeon crawler with roguelike mechanics and RPG elements. Sorry, I don't think you would want a procedurally generated Brick Breaker. It's cheap, it's simple, and it's fun. At $2.44, it's hard to pass this one up. Nintendo Life calls Urban Flow one of the most hectic yet relaxing games I've played, and I tend to agree. We don't see many good games come from Baltoro, but this one is definitely an anomaly. You're given a traffic situation, a selection of roads, rules, and signs, and have to piece them all together to create the most or highest traffic flow possible. If you like watching videos of seemingly therapeutic things, Urban Flow is that, but a video game. And right now, it's 87% off for just $1.99. And finally, what week would be complete without an indie game that just combines all kinds of genres into one well-crafted experience? Every time I think of Avocuddle, I'm reminded of just how much Mikey from Nindy Nexus loves this game and is responsible for helping me find such a diamond in the rough. The puzzles are great, the action is fun, the variety of gameplay is astounding, the visuals are handcrafted, the story is surprisingly emotional, and the soundtrack is fantastic. This adorable little game about an avocado looking for its soulmate is, frankly, far better than it has any right to be. Trust me on this one. Trust Mikey on this one. Go check out Avocuddle while it's 80% off for just $2.59. 
And there you have it, a couple excellent indies for around 10 bucks, and a few more for about two bucks each. In fact, you could grab all of this week's picks for just $35 and have enough variety to keep you occupied for a long time. Let me know what you're picking up down in the comments. And while you're feeling social, go chat with us on Twitter and join us on Discord. Depending on the E3 announcements and the big sale launching when this video posts on Tuesday, we might have another video later this week, but at the very least, you can count on Nindies at Night this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube, so come hang out and check out some brand new Nindies. If you've got eight minutes to spare, go take a look at the first piece of Nindy Nation community content with Nate Shackelford's Beautiful Desolation Review, and let me know if you'd like to flex your own creative muscle. I'm open to ideas and would love to see more of the citizens waving that Nindy Nation flag. Thanks for joining us this week. No doubt we'll have some big shadow drops to cover after the dust settles on E3. And stay tuned for our next announcement regarding the third Nindy Backlog Club title. That's all for next week, though, citizens, and we're all done for today. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out, and I look forward to seeing you back here again next Tuesday. Until then, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation Episode 117, and remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. <laughs>